Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be attempting a makeover on this number 28A Bedford compressor truck, which came out in 1956. These first came out in a orangey yellow or yellowy orange and uh, later they came out in a full-on yellow color. This is possibly the smallest matchbox toy that I've worked on. It's only 74 millimeters in length. As you can see, it is old school. The casting is very sort of rough, even though there is a lot of detail in it. So just before I crack on with this model, I thought it would be nice to show you the very first makeover that I ever did. And I'm not talking about one that's on my channel. This one was never filmed because I never thought of having a YouTube channel at the time. I've still got it and I'll show you it now. I bought it on eBay, probably back in 2018 perhaps. And the strange thing is that I saw it online and I purchased it. And it was only then that I realized that the person that was selling it could have been in anywhere in the world, but they're actually just around the corner from where I lived, which is absolutely amazing. Almost like divine intervention took over and guided me to this hobby. So I nipped round there, paid him at the door in cash, took it home and started my makeover and this is what it turned out like and it sat in my display cabinet for a while but because it was the first one I felt that it needed a special spot in my hobby room so I put it in this little presentation case and hung it on the wall unfortunately the glass in the front of it got broken during my move and I haven't yet got around to replacing it but I thought I'd just show it to you today because it's of interest if you are a regular viewer and are curious as to how I started out on this hobby and this YouTube channel. So I'll just put it back up there in its pride of place and continue with this uh, current makeover. So having another look at this, um, well obviously I'm going to have to strip it off and paint it, but first up I've got to remove these wheels, which can be awkward. Oh, there's a sticker on the bottom. That's great. This was package number 26. Now I do keep a record of package right from the first day and in here, is all the details of the people that have sent me stuff over the years and I've put pins in the maps and here's number 26 it's Ken Motts from Scottsdale in Arizona so thank you Ken this parcel I believe came early 2019 so uh, I apologize Ken it's taken me a while to get around to your model but uh, today is the day so I'll start with, I'll take your sticker off. Have a look under there, number 28. And there's a little area right in the center there that even Matchbox couldn't paint. Now this is, as I said, the Bedford compressor truck. And in the back there, there's like a diesel motor and a compressor. Behind the cabin there is two air cylinders or air tanks and um, some models come out with a gap between the air tanks and others come out with no gap this one has no gap if you have one that has a gap between the air tanks they are very rare and are worth a lot of money I believe so check that out if you have one um, at your place let me know in the comments here's some more details here I think that might be an exhaust coming through the roof of the rear cabin there and uh, check these axles out. They're the old style flattened ones that uh, came out with those really old 1950s models. I'm going to cut the axles off with these pliers because I can't remove them any other way. Then I'll have to make some new ones when I put it back together. It would seem that I've underestimated the strength of the metal that Matchbox chose for these axles. Now those pliers don't really work. These Matchbox cars are certainly made to last. So I go for an upgrade on some larger side cutters. And they did the job. So this model's unusual, uh, uh, well, a little bit unusual. One of its features there is it's got four wheels on the back and two on the front. Here's a close up of that crushed up end to let you see what I'm going to have to try and duplicate after I've finished this model and I'm putting it back together. Now 
Notice on the bottom there, the axle spread at the rear is smaller. And that's how come both axles are the same length, even though the rear one has four wheels on it and the front one only has two. Well, I managed to get all the wheels off, but uh, these are quite rare, these wheels. I think I've got a couple of spares, but not many. So I'm going to save them in this disposable container. And look there, I'm going to have to clean them up and also get rid of that green paint somehow. I've got to try and match this colour. Now I've got some yellows here and neither of them are close. As I said, that the, the early models came out with an orangey colour tinge and the later ones came out um, a yellower colour. I might have to add some red to this yellow to make this orangey colour, I think. So I'll put this one back on the shelf because I don't have any Mr. Hobby red. Anyway, when I'm putting it back on the shelf, I happen to notice this um, orangey colour. And I thought, well, hey, this might be the way to go. So I just put a little dab on there and initially I thought, mm, no, it's a little bit too light. It doesn't quite match the drabby sort of orange color that's on there. So I let the paint dry and normally the paint goes a little bit darker when it dries and I cleaned up the area around it with a cotton bud. Now when I look at it, it's very, very close. In fact, it's that close that I think I'm gonna run with this color Matchbox are quite known for their minor variations in colours, even though they tried to keep it consistent, they couldn't. So I'm going to use this Mr. Hobby paint, and unfortunately on the label it's all in Japanese. So I thought, how can I read this? I don't know how much to add to dilute the paint. So I downloaded this photo translator, which takes a picture of a sign or packaging and converts it from any language into English. So here we can see a few things here, please see a doctor, it said. And on the other side, there's another label. And one of the things it says here is, yo, wash the brushes. So all good information there. Now the last combine harvester I did, did not strip particularly well. And somebody commented that, oh, it's the fumes from the paint stripper that assist with the, the um, removal of the paint. You should put it in a airtight container. So today I'm going to take that information on board. In actual fact, I do have a recollection of trying this once in the past. So I've now modified the treatment by putting the paint stripper on and then putting it in the airtight container so that the fumes hopefully can assist in the removal of the paint in those difficult or hard to reach places. So whilst the paint stripping is taking place, I thought I would give you an update on Kevin's latest ventures. He wants to get a car license, so he's got some lessons booked in a couple of weeks but we thought we'd give him uh, a test drive on the electric golf cart and i've kept the gate locked and i've put this sign up as a reminder to kevin not to go out on the road so this is his first attempt at driving the golf buggy unassisted let's see how he goes are you ready kevin Right, back to the model. The paint stripping in the airtight container did not really achieve much. So I'm giving it a double whammy and going again. Uh, could be that it's old style paint. I don't know whether it's lead free or not, but the older paint does seem to resist removal more than the later stuff. So I'm just going to dilute this paint now to put it through the spray gun. And of course I've read the instructions on the thinners, so I know exactly how much to add. I set that aside and now I'm going to try and scrub all this 
paint off that's been loosened. It still doesn't really look like it's done much, does it? That paint stripper, it normally falls off. Anyway, maybe half an hour later, this is what I'm left with. A bare metal model, ready for painting. Now, I don't know what happened here. I must have missed a step last time I did a makeover, but my needle seems to be jammed in my airbrush and I had to get some pliers to pull it out. And I thought, what's going on here? And when I looked at it close up, I could see I hadn't properly cleaned it. There was still red paint from the combine harvester on it. So I had to take some time out and clean the airbrush. Yeah, that was a reminder to me to always keep your airbrush clean and ready for use. Whilst it's drying out, I thought I'd take the opportunity just to give a quick coat of the Tamiya Grey Primer. Set it up there on those magnetic clamps. Now it's been primed, you can really see the detail in this casting, yes. I'm happy with that. It's a mighty fine thing indeed. There's a badge on the above the grill, there's a Bedford badge above the grill. There's a compressor. I guess it's a diesel engine in the back there, an exhaust on the top. A radiator grill at the rear. It's just so much detail on such a tiny little model door handles and they've even cast leaf springs in the wheel arches which is pointless really because when the wheels on you can't see them anyway but look at those tiny little rivets and bolts on the uh, on the side of the engine oh that's better paint guns smooth as silk once again so here we go hmm the Mr. Hobby paint doesn't really seem to flow too well. That's probably why I, I, I prefer Tamiya, thinking about it. Anyway, the first coat seems to go on fairly well, although it's quite light and obviously needs extra. It's extremely bright yellow too, which is surprising. I thought it would be a little bit more orangey. I give it two or three more coats and I thought it looked good but under close inspection the paint had like a sandpaper consistency it had probably dried maybe I diluted it too much maybe it had dried in the air before it hit the model and the fact of the matter is I had to strip the model and make up some orange paint some yellow orange paint from the Tamiya ones as I was going to do initially and I had to repaint it and it took ages, much, much longer than I anticipated to paint the model. The previous owner painted not only the body green, but the tires as well. So I had to give those a quick coat of some light gray paint to make them look all original again. And this model was jazzed up a little bit at the factory by just painting in or highlighting a few of the details with some silver paint. So here I've painted the radiator, front radiator grill, the headlights and the bumper bar. And I've also painted the, the air tanks behind the cabin silver. And the rear radiator also was silver, so I painted that too. Now to put this back together, I'm going to have to uh, try and crimp the ends of these axles that I found. These are spare axles out of my spare axle box. And I'm going to heat them up with this blow torch and flatten the ends with these vice grips and as you can see I've modified the vice grips by grinding off the teeth so hopefully it will flatten rather than like make gouge marks so I'm trying to soften the axle here with heat so I'm heating it up until it's red hot and then I let it cool at room temperature. I don't quench it or anything. I just let it cool naturally. And apparently that's supposed to help soften the metal. And it should make it easier to squash. That's my theory. I'll put those lovely new looking wheels back on. 
And this is always a little bit nerve wracking because of the tension that you have to put in these pliers. And I'm always worried I'm going to damage the model. I have dropped a couple in the past. You can see a close up of that crimping action. It's actually flattening the end of that axle. Hopefully because it was softened by the heat treatment. Then I dress them up with this grinding wheel and I just try to dress them up to make them look a little bit better. So here's a reminder of what we started with, the green goblin version of this model. Whoever had it did well to paint the engine silver, that was a good idea. Maybe Matchbox should have thought of that, but maybe not the tyres. And this is what it looks like now. So I think you'll agree it looks heaps better than it did before. And uh, I do love the highlights of the silver on this model. It just makes it look all the more special. And I can understand why some child back in 1957 would have been in the little toy shop there and just drooled over this model and wanted it. And pleaded with his parents to buy it for him. Well, this one's going in my display cabinet now. And I shall move on to my next model. Right, let's see how Kevin's doing. Oh, well, I can't see Kevin anywhere. Where the hell is he? Oh my God, the gate's open. Kevin! Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe and recommend to your friends. And until next time, this is Marty saying goodbye. Kevin just got stole by the dogs. <laughs>